We have all said something along the lines of, I ate too much. <laughs> the word to, T-W, double O, I should say, T-O-O, in that statement is an adverb, and that means excessively. I, I ate too much. My sermon title is A Little Too Much, and I'm going to use T-O as it is a preposition in this case, meaning to approach or reach. So little over here to much over here. It is a comparison, in other words. Now that you've all passed 101 English grammar, <laughs> my focus is on how Christians are responsible for little. In the great scheme of things, what we have been given to do isn't really that much. It's doable, in other words, very doable, unless we're lazy about it or unless we turn away from it. And that little that we have been given to do can lead to much, which I'll we'll talk about. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 4 and verse 10, there is this statement. And I'm picking it out of the, the verse to make a point. And it has to do with the building of the temple and both historically and I would say prophetically. But here God says, who has despised the day of small things? You better take account for the small things is what God is actually challenging us here. I want to divide my sermon ed up to two points. God's work, that's number one, and then our lives. Let's begin uh, with a hard quote, by turning to Haggai chapter 2 and verse 3. Book of Haggai chapter 2 and verse 3 This prophecy was given during the time of the rebuilding of the temple following its destruction by Babylon. And now the Jews have returned and God is speaking through one of his prophets, Haggai, here in verse 3 of chapter 2. Who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now in comparison with it? Is this not in your eyes as nothing? <laughs> if you can keep your place in the book of Haggai, I'll also turn to Ezra 3.2 and actually trying to cross-reference what God is talking about here because this is the reaction when they actually did begin to rebuild the temple Haggai, I'm sorry, Ezra 3 and verse 12 says, But many of the priests and Levites and heads of the father's houses, old men who had seen the first temple, wept with a loud voice when the foundation of this temple was laid before their eyes. Yet many shouted for joy. Small beginning. Yeah, not anything like it was before. And yet the glory of that second temple would culminate in the re first appearance of Jesus Christ. Now back to the book of Haggai, chapter 1, verses 4 through 9. Because here we see that even though it was a smaller work by comparison, these people kind of left off doing the work. They just turned back and took care of themselves. Haggai 1, verse 4 is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paddled houses and this temple to be in ruins, God says to his people? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages earns wages to put them in a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. 
and even in the book of Haggai, it talks toward the end about how this temple would have more glory, and I won't turn to that right now. So it began small, and they weren't taking care of the little things. Little, at this stage, would never turn in to much. It just wouldn't happen until they turned, and they did. And the record is they turned, and God blessed them, and they completed that work by his encouragement. Luke 13, here's a great key an absolutely vital key for Christians if you're doing the work of God, and we all should be at one level or the other. Luke 13 and verse 20, and again he said, and we're speaking, these are the words of Jesus Christ, to what shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal, till it was all leavened. Here's the promise that everything, this little type of leaven is going to grow, and I'm using it now in a positive way, unlike the application of sin, but it will grow from this very small, tiny speck into the kingdom of God. Okay, that, again, just a quick reference about the work of God here. Now I'm going to talk about our lives relative to what I'm speaking about today of taking little and having it become much. Luke 6 and verse 10 Let me try that again, Luke 16 and verse 10. I left out the important part of that combination of verses and chapters. Luke 16 and verse 10. Here's the key that I think we need to understand. And when we go about our assignments in a church, our personal assignments in our daily lives, the things we put together, how we organize and prioritize. Christ says, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And contrawise, he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Luke 19 in verse 17. Luke 19 in verse 17. Christ speaking here. And he said to him, Well done, good servant. Because you were faithful in a very little, have authority over ten cities. Don't you think that fits the formula that I'm talking about? You were just faithful with what I gave you. Therefore, I'm going to give you a lot more. Luke 22 and verse 24, to begin reading through verse 20, uh, verse 30. And I love this section of Scripture for what it tells and what it talks about in terms of the attitude of the disciples carnal as a bed bug <laughs> at this point in their life because here they go and boy do I remember over the years how often this type of attitude would flare up especially as assignments to be sent out from headquarters at Pasadena would come around now there was also a dispute among them as to which of them should be considered the greatest. <laughs> Sorry, I should, probably shouldn't laugh, but it's it's so human. And we know by the record, brethren, that these disciples, at least 11 of them, if came to understand the proper approach, 
And he said to them, The kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and those who exercise authority over them are called benefactors. But not so among you. On the contrary, who, he who is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he who governs as he who serves. For who is greater, he who sits at the table or he who serves? Is it not he who sits at the table? Yet I, this is Jesus Christ speaking, I am among you as the one who serves. But you are those who have continued with me in my trials. A lot of them didn't. These are the ones who were faithful, who took care of the little things they had been given up to this point. And I, because you're doing this, Christ says, I bestow upon you a kingdom, just as my Father bestowed one upon me, that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom and sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Wow. That little bit of loyalty to Jesus Christ will turn out to be absolutely an incredible opportunity for these men in the kingdom, and so it applies to us. David was a shepherd boy, the youngest of Jesse's sons. In fact, he was so discounted at that point that when it came time for Samuel to anoint him, and he had called and gone through all of the brothers, they left David out watching the sheep. Well, the youngest still is out there, so bring him in. We won't sit down, uh, Samuel said, until I see him. And he turned out to be the one. And even later, toward the end of his life, David marveled at the transformation in his life in this time that God brought to him that he should become ruler over God's people Israel from being a shepherd But as the life of David showed, he took care of details, the little things. And God knew he had the kind of heart to which he could bring blessings, the kind of attitude that he was looking for. Brethren, we've been about keeping the days of unleavened bread, having to, you know, look at make judgment calls, and whether it does or doesn't have leavening, it's all part of the process, but then to look more deeply at what is going on in our lives. These processes are meant for a reason. That's why the holy days are what they are. It's why we uniquely, in this 7 billion plus population on the earth, why we in God's church, and I say that in the broader sense of talking about God's people, those who have his Holy Spirit. We're being faithful in the little things. And the reward to that, I don't think we can even begin to imagine. We can look at Revelation 2 and 3 and get a hint of what Christ promises his church. And you could even study that as on the side and see how he said, look, because you have done this, I will do this. And it's... Uh, you apply that across the board to understand what Christ is after for his people. Let me conclude just making this statement. If we are physically taking care of the details in our life and spiritually turning to God, all in a way small things by comparison in the greater scheme of life, what will God do? He will give us eternal life. And we have, if I could call it, a little life right now. 70, 80, 90 years in in this time period. What will it be like when we have much life? Eternal life in the kingdom of God. (laughs) 